This question is asking to provide the major products for the following reactions. And the thing to point out here is we have these haloalkanes. So we have an electrophilic carbon with a good leaving group. And there's a trend here. We have a, a primary carbon with a good leaving group, and then a secondary carbon, and then a tertiary carbon. And we are reacting with ethanol in uh, all three cases here. So um, I guess I'm going to start with this first one. And we have a primary carbon with a good leaving group on it. And uh, because it's only a primary carbon, we know right away that we can't have an SN1 or an E1 reaction. And the reasoning for that is we can't form the carbocation intermediate that we need to have an SN1 or E1 mechanism because there's uh, the carbocation is just not going to be stable enough. It's uh, not going to get enough um, stability from uh, hyperconjugation from only one adjacent carbon. You need to have at least two. So uh, like this, for example, can form a good carbocation intermediate, and uh, the same with the tertiary carbon. So we know we can't have SN1 or E1. So our other options are SN2 or E2. And in order to have an SN2 reaction on a primary carbon, we need to have a, uh, <clears throat> a uh, good nucleophile. And you should know that uh, ethanol is just not a very good nucleophile, and that's just something you need to be aware of, that alcohols are not very good nucleophiles. So because of that, we can't have an SN2 reaction. And um, likewise, uh, as you know, uh, nucleophilicity and basicity usually run together, and ethanol is not an especially strong base either, so that rules out an elimination reaction. And as we uh, exhausted all our options here, we know that we're not going to have a reaction here. Okay, on to the second one. We have a secondary carbon with a good leaving group. And uh, in my opinion, for these uh, questions where you need to decide what type of substitution or elimination reaction you're going to have, when uh, the leaving group is on a secondary carbon, they're usually the most difficult. And the reasoning for that is you have to go through all the factors um, involved in the reaction to decide what's going to happen. So I guess I'll just list them. You need to look at the, uh, the leaving group. You need to look at the nucleophile, see how strong of a nucleophile it is. Uh, you have to look at the basicity of the nucleophile, because often you have a good nucleophile, but it's also so basic that you're more likely to end up with uh, an E2 reaction. So basicity of a nucleophile. And you also have to look at the solvent, because often the, uh, the nucleophile is kind of a borderline case. And uh, whether the solvent is protic or aprotic will uh, lead it toward uh, SN1 or E1. So here, uh, the leaving group would be the, uh, the bromine atom, which would leave as a bromide anion and uh, form the carbocation. That would be stable enough because it's a secondary carbon. So. Uh, that doesn't really tell us much because we can still have SN1 or E1 reactions, but it doesn't rule out SN2 or E2 either. So the next thing is the nucleophile. And uh, like I said above, the uh, nucleophile here is ethanol, which is not an especially strong nucleophile, which uh, makes SN2 a lot less likely. But uh, just to make sure, you need to look at the, uh, the solvent. And uh, here we have a protic solvent, which is ethanol. It's uh, both a nucleophile and the uh, solvent. And uh, protic solvents favor SN1 reactions, whereas aprotic solvents like uh, acetone favor SN2 reactions. And uh, the reasoning for that has to do with the formation of the solvent shell uh, around a nucleophile. And basically, uh, when you have a tighter solvent shell, which uh, you get with uh, protic solvents, it uh, basically hinders the, uh, the attack of the nucleophile, and uh, you're just less likely to have an SN2 reaction. So, um, yeah, so everything so far is pointing towards an SN1 reaction, and uh, just to make sure, we'll look at the basicity, and like I said above, uh, ethanol is just not a very strong base, so that rules out the elimination reactions. So everything here is pointing towards a SN1 reaction, and that is what we have. And um, 
I'm not going to draw the full mechanism, but you should be aware that's just the uh, the bromide anion leaves, and uh, you're left with the carbocation intermediate, and then the nucleophile attacks, and then you need to deprotonate the uh, the oxygen to have a neutral charge. And uh, I didn't draw any uh, stereochemistry here, but you should know that we would have a racemic product here. And the reason for that is because the uh, carbocation is trigonal planar, so the nucleophile can attack from above or below to create the uh, different stereocenters, if uh, that would be a stereocenter. Uh, yeah, it would be. Okay. Now for this third reaction, we have a tertiary carbon, and right away when you see a tertiary carbon you can rule out SN2 right away. The reasoning for that is there's just too much steric hindrance uh, on the carbon to do a backside attack. And uh, I guess I don't really have to do it again because it's just the same uh, factors that I went through here. They all apply to tertiary carbons also. And uh, again everything's leading towards an SN1. And um, might even be more likely here because the uh, carbocation is uh, it's more stabilized by hyperconjugation, so it might actually be a faster reaction. I'm not really sure about that, but I do know that it definitely is an SN1 reaction. And uh, our product here would be this. And um, I guess that's it.